Welcome to Ask the Expert with noted radio host Steve Sleeper. Each week, Steve interviews entrepreneurs and professionals and shares their intriguing stories of success and service. Now, here's radio veteran Steve Sleeper. And welcome to another edition of Ask the Expert. Our guest today is Sue Weaver uh, with Susan M. Weaver, attorney in, uh, in Cleveland, Ohio. Sue, how are you doing today? Oh, pretty good. Okay, good, good. Well, uh, tell me a, a, a little bit about your firm and, and yourself, Sue. Well, I started in 1985, um, which seems like forever. <laughs> um, I've always been on my own except for one disastrous year when I was in a partnership arrangement. Um, and I decided that being on my own is a much better thing to do. Absolutely. Recent, recently, I have taken on what I call a sidekick. Um, she's got her own business, but she wanted to do more in the area of custody and um, visitation. So I, um, I figured I wanted to slow down a little bit. So we've sort of been working together, and I hand her off all the stuff that I really don't want to do anymore. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that, that's a good idea. Um, Sue, what, what should we look for in a family lawyer? I think the most important thing is communication. You need to feel comfortable with the attorney. You need to feel that you can share information, that you'll be respected, you'll be listened to. And basically, it's your divorce, not the attorney's. Mm -hmm. So you need to be the one who is making the decisions. Um, it also needs to be somebody who knows something about domestic relations law. Um, I think that I bring something extra to the table and that I have a background in social work. So I, I listen a little more carefully, and I think I take people's um, emotional issues more into consideration than some of my uh, colleagues. But I think it's the communication issue that's the most important yeah. when looking for a divorce attorney. Yeah, absolutely. Um, tell me, do when folks come to you and they want to file to, for divorce, do you find that they've waited too long to do that? No, I don't think, in generally, I don't think people wait too long. I mean, on occasion, you'll have somebody who's waited until the other party has spent all the marital assets, and then they come in. And then it's a little hard to divvy stuff up. But usually, um, I mean, I take the very cautious approach. You don't want somebody getting a divorce who then you know, three months later, you know, what have I done? This could have been saved. Um, so I'm, I'm the one that usually is referring people to counseling, um, to go see a religious, a spiritual advisor, whatever, to see if they, if, if they really are truly at an impasse where they have to terminate the marriage, especially if they're children. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, and what are what are grounds for divorce in Ohio? Well, there are about 10 or 11 of them, but the ones that are used most often, because Ohio is a uh, what we call a no-fault state, um, we usually use incompatibility that is not objected to by the other side. Um, so basically, if you just don't get along anymore, that's the grounds for divorce. Uh, we also use living separate and apart for more than one year, um, or the old standby gross neglected duty, yeah. whatever that means. Yeah, whatever that means, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you... I mean, there's also habitual drunkenness and, you know, some other things that we just really don't use. Right. Adultery. Yeah. Do, do you ever go to uh, to mediation? Well, I personally don't go to mediation. My clients go to me mediation. Right, right. That's um, that's what I meant. Uh, our court in Cuyahoga County, well, both I I practice in two counties, Cuyahoga, 
which is Cleveland and Lorraine, and both of those counties have mediation departments. Um, there are also private mediators, and I use them extensively when when there are people who really can probably sit down and iron out their issues. Um, and then all I need to do is put whatever they've agreed to into legalese, and then we can go get a hearing date, and it's a very easy process from there. Kind of shifting gears just a little bit, Sue. Um, is is there alimony anymore? Yes. Um, and it's kind of interesting. In Lorraine County, there's there are 15 factors the court is supposed to take into consideration in determining alimony, which we call spousal support. But the courts don't do that kind of analysis. They have what we call rules of thumb. And in Lorain County, the rule of thumb is you equalize incomes one year for every five years of marriage. And they look at the slice of, like, when you filed for divorce. So if at that very moment, say the the say the mother has been out of the workforce for 10 years and just landed an awesome job making, say, $65,000 a year, whereas the husband has been always working but making around 35000 a year, she will end up paying the husband spousal support. Oh, I see. Okay. In Cuyahoga County, they they again don't really take the factors into consideration that much, but their rule of thumb is a lot more loose. Um, it's one year for every three to five years of alimony uh, of marriage. Sometimes they equalize income, sometimes they don't. They take into consideration the duration of the marriage um, and what the track record of employment has been over the years. So it's different from county to county then, huh? Yeah. Yeah, wow. H- how about... And you need to know what your county is. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, is child support, is that still prevalent or...? Oh, yeah. Okay. And we have child support guidelines. Um, child support guidelines came in in the 80s. It's interesting. In uh, Cuyahoga County, I developed child support guidelines before there were any. Um, because what we had been doing in Cuyahoga County was it was 25 bucks per week per kid, regardless of how much income there was. And I was working for the court, and the judge who was the administrative judge at that time said that that, was, that didn't seem right to him. So I, I hired a... Um, well, I hired the Ohio State University to help me figure out how to design child support guidelines, and they did, uh, based on incomes, based on number of kids in the family, um, and the ages of the children. It was a very complex formula. And um, shortly after we came out with that, which increased child support phenomenally, um, shortly after that, everybody started going with the guidelines. Oh, okay. So, yeah, yeah. Um, custody, is it, uh, is it joint? Is it mom? What, what, what do you see uh, on average? Well, in Ohio, we called it shared parenting. Mm-hmm. And that is becoming much more prevalent. Um, and it's sort of lost its... Initially, what it meant was shared decision-making and responsibility. It didn't mean 50-50 time with a kid um, because parenting time is basically based on what your work schedule is. And the assumption is that everybody's working these days. So that is the prevalent model, if you will, Mm -hmm. unless there's some reason why they shouldn't share decision-making and responsibility. But then again, you've got the same old, old-fashioned old model of visitation, which is every other weekend and Wednesday evening for dinner. 
what they call it, shared parenting. Yeah, so. okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, we've talked about uh, uh, some of the differences in Ohio law and even some of the differences between counties. Uh, is, is there any anything else unique about the divorce laws in Ohio? Well, I think clients get a have a hard time getting the idea that it's a no-fault state, which means it doesn't really matter at all what the reason for the divorce is. Mm-hmm. Um, I get a lot of, well, he's cheating on me or she's cheating on me, and somehow they feel that should factor into the property division or custody, and it really doesn't, and that's upsetting. The other thing that people seem to not understand, and I don't think it's unique, but I think there's a basic misunderstanding, is that any pension or retirement assets that have been accumulated during the marriage are divided equally between the parties, regardless of who actually earned them. Because the theory is that anything that was accumulated during the marriage is divided equally unless there's some good reason why it shouldn't be. And I, I suppose that's uh, nobody's ever happy about that, I guess, you know, uh, but, uh, but, but it is what it is. W- what's the most common question you get, Sue? Well, other than how much is it going to cost me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, right, exactly. Uh-huh. Yeah. The other question is how long is it going to take? Um, and that's a hard one because if there's really no good answer. In general, a divorce takes about, can take anywhere from three months to a year. The Supreme Court knows uh, cases involving custody of children should take no longer than a year to complete. Oh, so. Okay, all righty. Well, it used to take a lot longer, but... We're keeping it down to a year now. To, to a year. Okay. Well, well, Sue, this has been a lot of great information on uh, on uh, family law and divorce laws in Ohio, and I, I appreciate your being on Ask the Expert today. Uh, h- how do we reach you? Well, the easiest way is to either call me at 216-373-2555 or by email which is Susan at SusanWeaverLaw.com. And your website is SusanWeaverLaw.com if you want to... uh, Correct. uh, Yeah, if you want to meet Sue via the website first, that's always good. And uh, uh, our guest today has been uh, uh, Sue Weaver with Susan M. Weaver, attorney at law in in, uh, two locations in the Cleveland area. And uh, uh, Sue, thanks very much for being on Ask the Expert today. Well, thank you. Thanks for listening to Ask the Expert with Steve Sleeper. Join us next time as entrepreneurs and professionals share their intriguing stories of success and service.